MP Anthony Magnall is trying to pass a bill in Parliament that would be an absolute travesty for the Dartmoor while camping ban situation and he's doing it by lying to Parliament. To give you a bit of background, Anthony Magnall is the Conservative MP for Totnes whose campaign received a £5,000 donation from Dartmoor landowner Alex Darwell in 2020. Alex Darwell is the man responsible for the Dartmoor camping ban scandal. Dartmoor National Park was the only place in England and Wales where camping without permission was deemed legal until Darwell brought a case to the High Court which ruled that wild camping does not constitute an open air recreational activity as defined by the Dartmoor Commons Act 1985. Darwell then promptly struck a deal with the Dartmoor National Park Authority for them to start paying him an undisclosed amount of taxpayer money to give restricted permissive access to the National Park. Anthony Magnall has insisted that this £5,000 donation has had absolutely no influence on him. I received a donation from the individual who put the uh, case to the High Court. Um, that donation has had no impact on the decisions I make. But I'll let you be the judge of that. He originally completely refused to comment on the Dartmoor World Camping Ban and only ended up releasing this statement after huge public outcry and calls of corruption. Hi everyone, I thought I'd just do a quick video to talk about the decision by the High Court regarding Dartmoor National Park. It's clear uh, that there's a great deal of misinformation out there. So the first thing should be said is that wild camping isn't being banned and the right to roam is not being restricted. So what actually happened this weekend was that Dartmoor National Park said that Clause 10, Section 1 uh, does not give the right in recreational activities to allow wild camping. It was a clarification. And what needs to happen now is either an amendment to the Dartmoor National Park Act uh, to include wild camping or for the Dartmoor National Park Authority to come to an agreement with the landowners that own land surrounding and on Dartmoor National Park. I hope that they can do a combination of both, actually, come to agreement with landowners and look to try and change the rules on this matter. Um, the second thing to make about this point is that I received a donation from the individual who put the uh, case to the High Court. Um, that donation has had no impact on the decisions I make. It's not restricted me in saying anything. It's not made me in favour of one position or another. But I am, as it turns out, in favour of wild camping, in favour of the right to roam and in favour of protecting Dartmoor National Park. I've never had another donation from that individual. I've never discussed this matter with the individual. And there's absolutely no ability for members of parliament to get involved in legal processes, nor should they, which is why I've been reluctant to comment on that issue. So um, hopefully that clears things up. As I say, I've got work to do to make sure that we can ensure that Dartmoor National Park remains open and available for everyone, as well as trying to secure more money to help secure its future. In his statement, he says he's never discussed the matter with Alex Darwell, yet now he's bringing a law to Parliament that benefits absolutely nobody apart from Darwell and other landowners and goes completely against the will of his very vocal constituents. In his original statement, he said he was in favour of wild camping in Dartmoor, but refused to specify whether he supported enshrining into law the right to wild camp in Dartmoor National Park or whether he supported camping that requires permission from the landowners and for them to get paid for it. I exchanged a few emails with Anthony Anthony Magnall in a previous video in which Anthony further insisted that no donation has any influence on him and his actions, which is why he's in favour of wild camping. I responded that it's great that he's in favour of wild camping, but will he back legislation that enshrines into law a right to wild camp in Dartmoor, or does he support wild camping that requires permission from the landowners? That's when he stopped replying. Fast forward to his recent parliamentary bid. And it turns out that not only is he supporting camping that requires permission, he's trying to pass a bill to enshrine into law A, that camping in Dartmoor National Park must be permissive, which means landowners can rescind permission at any time, this power can be used as a threat, as Dahl was already proved by trying to blackmail the Dartmoor National Park Authority but I'll get onto that later. B, that landowners like his pal, Alex Darwell, will be incentivized or paid for this permissive access. C, that appoints more landowners to the Dartmoor National Park Committee, expanding their influence within Dartmoor National Park Authority's decision-making process. It's a proposal to increase private corporate power within a government institution. The thing is, Anthony Magnall lied to Parliament, or potentially made a mistake, I'll let you be the judge, by saying that landowners have no representation on the Dartmoor National Park Committee. The fact that landowners have no representation on the Dartmoor National Park Committee should be a cause for 
the concern and immediately rectified. Well, actually, 13 out of the 19 DMPA board members actually own land within the Dartmoor National Park boundaries. And three of these members own very large portions of land in the area. So landowners are actually already incredibly well represented in the Dartmoor National Park Committee. And it's hard to believe that Anthony Magnall didn't know this when he chose to use it as an argument in Parliament. It would seem Anthony's angling for his mate Alex Darwell to be appointed to the committee, giving his private corporate interests even more influence over the Dartmoor National Park. Now let's examine the main problems with this bill. Firstly, the purpose of this bill is to incentivise owners of land within Dartmoor National Park to allow enhanced access to that land in certain circumstances for connected purposes. Well, what enhanced access is this? The Dartmoor Commons Act 1985 already grants the public a right of access on foot or horseback for the purpose of open air recreation. Up until Darwell's court case, camping was deemed an open air recreational activity under the Dartmoor Commons Act and was allowed without permission. So there's no enhanced access being offered, quite the opposite. This bill actually proposes reduced access, seeing as it's permissive, which can be rescinded at any moment. So this notion of enhanced access is completely false. What this really means is they want the power in favour of the landowners and their interests, rather than the National Park Authority's recreational and environmental interests. This attempt to enshrine into law the permissive agreement for camping will see landowners pay taxpayer money, not by agreement with the DMPA, but by law, for said permission. The true significance of this relates to the threat it poses to the DMPA's appeal to the High Court verdict. As you may be aware, the DMPA announced its decision to appeal the High Court verdict. If the DMPA were to win this appeal and camping was deemed to be an open air recreational activity under the Dartmoor Commons Act, giving us back the legal right to camp in Dartmoor without permission, then this bill would completely reverse that, enshrining into law that landowners will be paid taxpayer money for permissive access. And note, it doesn't specify permissive access for camping, simply permissive access, so we could see our right to roam become permissive as well. This bill would ensure that no matter what happens in the court appeal, Darwell gets his way ensuring he gets funneled taxpayer money for permissive access which can be rescinded at any time. I think they run the risk of losing sight of what we're here to do which is try and make money. That, mm -hmm. That's our job is to make money. I'm unashamed, you know, we try to make money. And this comes after Darwell already tried to blackmail the DMPA at their board meeting the day they decided to appeal the verdict. In his statement he threatened to remove the permissive access to Dartmoor if they decide to appeal the verdict. Listen to it here. By taking an appeal for Forward, you risk imperiling that for the public. In short, you do not need to pursue this appeal. You should not pursue this appeal. And if you do, you risk creating a situation which is worse than the current one. If you fail, you risk landowners withdrawing permission. In doing so, he contradicted everything he said about wanting to keep the camping tradition intact in Dartmoor proving this whole move is about money and power. His attempt to intimidate the DMPA, however, didn't work. Every member of the board voted unanimously to appeal the verdict. The bulk of his speech was disguised with a concern for the environment, but he mentions various times the importance that agriculture and environmental protection must take over recreation. Recreational activity is critically important to human health, but it should not come at the expense or above that of environmental or agricultural activities that are present upon the moorland. Agriculture and environmental protection used in the same sentence. Bit of a juxtaposition there, isn't it? As agriculture is one of the most damaging activities for the environment, particularly in this country where vast amounts of carcinogenic pesticides that are banned in the EU are sprayed and toxic human sludge is laid on our fields and dumped in our rivers, which is also banned in the EU. Natural England, the governing body in charge of conserving the environment, released a report recently which expressed huge concern for the environmental degradation and destruction of wildlife in Dartmoor National Park thanks to harmful agricultural practices. They proposed reducing livestock grazing levels in winter to prevent the destruction of the National Park. But MP Anthony Magnall published a letter speaking out against this, showing how farcical his concern for the environment really is. Oh, and guess what? Anthony's mate Alex Darwell is a cattle farmer in Dartmoor. So this is another stance Anthony's taken which helps Darwell. So whilst Anthony Magnall talks a strong game about protecting the environment, which was the whole justification for proposing this bill, his actions prove time and time again that he puts the interests of his corporate donors first, despite the destruction caused to the environment and his constituents. I also haven't heard him mention the fact that Alex Darwell released a flock of pheasants into a protected woodland, endangering a rare species of beetle 
Where's your environmental concern for that, Anthony? All we need to do to gauge Anthony Magnall's true concern for the environment is examine his voting history. He has consistently voted to allow water companies to dump raw, untreated sewage in our rivers decimating our environments. That's how concerned he is for our environment. The most worrying part about this bill is that it doesn't specifically relate to camping. The enhanced access Anthony Magnall speaks of could very well end up being applied to the right to roam, walking, cycling, horse riding, rock climbing and the other open air recreational activities for which we have rights under the Dartmoor Commons Act 1985. So he wants to pass a bill to make it law that landowners like Alex Darwell get paid by the government taxpayer money for the enhanced access that the public already get thanks to the Dartmoor Commons Act. Only it's not enhanced access, it's reduced permissive access. In conclusion, this bill does not reflect the interests of the Dartmoor residents, but rather the interests of Alex Darwell, a wealthy hedge fund manager who's playing a game of chess, restricting our rights in order to secure payments from the government. I think they run the risk of losing sight of what we're here to do, which is try and make money. That, mm -hmm. That's our job, is to make money. I'm unashamed, you know, we try to make money. And Anthony Magnall is using concern for the environment as an excuse to pass laws to restrict our rights and guarantee taxpayer money is siphoned off to his corporate donor Alex Darwell. But that £5,000 bribe, I mean donation, had no influence on you, right Anthony?